So this video is going to be about the selection tool and how it works in Open Canvas. The selection tool can be found in the left bar uh, with this icon of a square with like a dotted line. And when you click this, in the tool option window, you're going to get all the choices for your selection. The first thing is the creation methods. So if you have this first one click, that means that when you make a selection and then you make another selection, the selection you made before is going to disappear. So each time you make a new selection, only that selection is valid. The second one is to add to selection. So you have one selection, you make another selection, they join together, or if they don't touch, they just stick around. The third one is to remove the, a selection. So uh, in other words, you have something selected and then you select another thing and what covers overlaps is going to get cut. So you do like this, it's going to get cut. And the very, very last one is overlap. And that means that if you have these things selected and you make a new selection, only that will remain which was covered by both selections, the new one and the old one. The next important thing is that when you make selections and you have, for example, the add-on, that's going to work just fine if you start on the outside. However, if you want to start a new selection on the inside, it's just going to move your entire selection. And you can see that when you're ready to select and you can select freely, then the little arrow is white. And that means it's going to make a new selection or remove a selection in this case. It's, it's white. But if it's, you're on the inside and it's going to move the selection, the little arrow is black. And that means it's going to drag it. To avoid this thing, because especially when you're using freeform selections like this one, you really want to start from the inside sometimes when you're tracing an animal or something. And then you just hold shift. And if you hold shift, then you can select from the inside. You can make your selections like this and they will just join. And this is on the plus, but even if you're on the removing part or the overlapping part, if you hold shift, it'll always add to the selection, no matter on which of these creation methods you are. Now, same thing goes for alt. Now, if you hold alt, then it's minus. You can see that even when I'm on the inside, it's a white arrow. It has little minus next to it. And that means that if I now drag it won't drag the selection around it'll just remove no matter on which of these i am but if i am on the remove part then i have to start from the outside if i want it to work so and if i want to start from the inside i use alt so that that's the rules of the creation methods now we have different modes uh, if you want to remove a selection that you have made or you don't like it of course you can do undo so that'll uh, uh, undo the last movements you made but if you want to re remove it totally you either click Control d or you go up to select up here and you click deselect so if we've deselected now i'm going to show you what different modes there are so the first one we have seen it is the square now you can have for example keep proportion which means that your square is always going to be perfectly square not so i mean i should have said rectangle in the beginning this is a square and then you can center which means that the point from which you begin will be the point from which the square grows so if you care, for example, that I want the square to be exactly here, I want it to start here, then, then you click this center thing. Normally these are not clicked from the beginning. The next one is circle. So of course, oval or circle, it can be any direction as you want. And same thing, keep proportion to make it a perfect circle and center to make it start from the, from the point where you initially put your pen down. The next one is the polygon selection. So this just means you click with your pen like this and you can select any kind of straight line shape. And when you've gotten to the last one, you double click, which is easier said than done. And then you have the shape. And the last one is free form selection or they call it select lasso. So it's like lasso tool in, in Photoshop. And that's just a free form selection. So you can just select something, you know, with your hands. And then you, for example, you want to remove an eye or something and add teeth <laughs> like this. <laughs> it's an angry rat. Uh, this is what we've selected. Yeah. It is an angry rat. Definitely looks like a very angry rat. So what can you actually do with a selection? Well, the first thing is that when you've selected something, 
only the selected area is going to be affected with whatever else you take. So for example, if I've selected this square here and now I take the move tool and I move, then I am moving this part only that, has, that was selected of this image. So that's the first thing you can do. Then you can use a free transform. So as long as a selection is on, you're going to see that only this area will be affected by the free transform. It won't work on the entire layer. So if you click here, the free transform, then what happens is this area is what you're going to be able to transform, to turn around, to, to move, to rotate and everything, all these things are only going to happen on the selected area. If you take the freeform selection and you have a drawing like this, you can select an area that you want to change. Then you say free transform. If you move this little dot on free transform to the side, that's where it's going to turn. And then you can say, oh, I want his head to be more open. And this way you can move parts of your drawing or if you're doing animations, <laughs> make your alligator much scarier or crocodile in this case, I think probably. So the next thing that is very good about selections is the selection window or the selection layers and how you get those. Normally they would be here, but I have moved things around. So you're going to here under window, you found a, a window that's called select and you click that and here you're going to see your selection. So I have this selected right now and here you can see the selection existing. And um, normally this would be here. It would be like this. So if you're looking at layers, you're going to see the, the text select here and if you click that you will see your selections. You can drag it by the name and put it outside because normally when you learn to work with this and I love working with this, you're going to want to see both the layers and the selection layers at the same time. So what this does is every time you make a selection right now, I don't want the selection, right? So I'm going to deselect it and then it disappears. Then there is nothing and it disappears. You're not going to get that back. But if you want to have selections that you get back, and let's say I'm going to make some freeform selections for this little critter here, right? I'm just going to do it really fast and easy. So like this, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to speed this up so you don't get bored. So I have one selection now. I have the selection here. I want to keep it. So instead of clicking deselect, I take another layer here. Now nothing is selected, but the selection is in memory. And so it's as a selection layer. And now I make another selection, right, for something else that I want to have selected. Okay, so now I have another selection, then I click this. Now I'm going to make another selection. So I have the water selected and then I'm going to make another selection. And let's say I think he needs to have something inside of the mouth because this is a very weak looking alligator. So, and now I have all of these selections and when I draw, I, this is how I usually do it. I select first. When I draw, I just go to these selections. I take my pen on, so like this. So when you draw, you can just very quickly get what you want. But, and you don't have to really worry about anything because you can only draw in the selected area, right? Like this. And then you get the teeth. You change the selection for the teeth. And you draw it well isn't it has he been eating let's make it a little bit reddish right <laughs> I don't know. then the inside of the mouth right for example you want this like that and then you want the water you change to the water selection every time you can see the little dots right so the dots are everywhere now every selection that you use this way, you can inverse. So for example, let's say I have the alligator head, but I want to draw around the alligator. So I want that inverted. So then you go here on the little hamburger and you say duplicate selection as if you want both of them because you can just inverse it. And then you go up to select and you say inverse. And then you have one that is the opposite. That means you can draw everywhere except on the alligator. So let's say now I want to have a background. Of course, this is going to go over his teeth, so you need to have different selections for every use. But anyway, accepting the teeth 
it's gonna not draw on the alligator. So that way you can have all these plus and minus selections. And I'm gonna show you an example of how I use that. You can see how many selections I actually have on a pretty simple drawing. And that's because I make the selections first and then I just fill in the colors through the selection so I don't even use the line art. I use the line art to, to guide in the beginning, but then I, I use the selections to draw. So of course you can also draw directly with your selection tool and just, uh, well, I'm going to show an example. And now because it's a selection, all that you're going to draw will is going to be only in this selection, right? So let's make this a little bit smaller. Oh, well, that's not exactly what we wanted. Now you can also create a selection by holding control and clicking the the window here in the layers in the regular layers and that'll select the area that is painted so filled with color on that layer and that'll automatically create a selection which then goes here you can see it says selection layer 7 it has made that selection from from the layer so if you've lost the selection but all you've drawn or filled in is that shape you can re, re get the selection back that way now if we want to make a background now, we can make another selection. If it's a gray area like this, even if it says selection 15, it's empty. So here you can just click that to have a new selection. And now let's say we want to have some background, right? Okay, so we have this background selected. And as long as you're on a separate layer, now we can say like this, let's say that. Okay, and let's just do this right and so immediately you have a background now you invert this so you say uh, select inverse and now you have the top so now you can go with of course all these selections when you come back to them you can adjust them so you can take your selection tool again your freeform selection if that's what you want and then you just hold hold shift to to make it sure for example you want this you think ah oh, this is too big for example i don't want this big line here or i want her hand to have a finger here that looks a little bit more human because this does not look very human and like this and then you can go get your brush and get on the on her layer and just wait a minute opacity and you can just brush that in and I think it was a little bit darker and you can just brush that in so these selections can be fixed can be amended if every all the time so I'm just wrapping this up with showing how I use the selection tool in my drawings, which are dogs, dogs, dogs lately. And um, I use it a lot. I think it's an extremely useful tool. And especially with the selection layers, I find it very, very useful and very practical. And if you would like to see the full, arduous and long process of how I draw my dog drawings, then go to this video that I am showing on the screen right now. It is the full process video of one of my dog paintings.